Greetings, friends, and welcome to another exploration of fractions. This time we're going to be taking away from our fractions, but I know you know a little bit about how to do that. For example, what if we have a problem like, oh, three-fifths minus one-fifth. Let's bring those three-fifths out here. Here they are. Then take away one-fifth, and what's left? Two-fifths. Super easy. But what happens if our denominators aren't the same? What if our families don't agree? Well, we're going to have to use another strategy to solve a problem like that. What about one like 5 sixth minus 1 third? Ooh, you can already see these are different families, but let's bring those all out here. Here's our five sixths. Makes a pretty nice shape there. But how are we going to get one of these out of there? Ooh, that's going to be tough. Hmm, now you can use the pieces to see it. You can use equivalency as well, but... Um, is there some way we could change that third into sixths? And how many sixths would we get? Well, let's do it. Pow! It would be two sixths that we take away. But let's actually take two sixths away. And let's write down what our problem looks like now. Five sixths minus two sixths. We can actually already see the answer. Three sixths, but wait, if you know about equivalency and if you saw some familiarity in this shape, you know that that is also equivalent to a half. So let's reduce it and mark our final answer down as one half. Pretty cool, huh? Well, let's try another one. What if we had something a little stranger like, ooh, three fifths minus a half? Let's write that one down. And you may remember something similar like this to our addition lesson. Well, what did we do in that one? Remember, we can always use raising and reducing and equivalency to figure this out. Sometimes we can turn one fraction into the other fraction's family or the other way around, but sometimes we have to do both of them. And if we uh, think about the common multiples of both 2 and 5, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, it keeps going, and 5 is 5, 10, 15, you heard 10 for both 5 and for both the half, for 2s. So we need to take away one of these. But how many tenths would that be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's do this as we go. There's the five tenths. Uh, how many tenths would our three fifths turn into? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six tenths. And you probably already knew that. So now we can see our problem is much easier. We could solve this in our heads very easily. Six tenths minus five tenths. Well, we're going to be taking that away. One, two, three, four, five tenths away. What's left? Just one lonely tenth. Well, that's okay. That's a pretty good slice of pie. And it's just your favorite kind of pie, too. Well, friends, I hope you learned a lot about using raising, reducing, and equivalency to solve those subtraction problems with different denominators. I can't wait to see how you take this away.